In this video, my issues continue with a mistake leading to a very minor accident. But I gather myself back up and have made myself a little fight back video here, showing that I have some pace and if I can eliminate those mistakes, I'll be on for a good result, the one I've been waiting for very, very soon. Hey guys, Eerie is here and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, then subscribe now and click the bell icon so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So you join me here in Quali today for the next FIA Nations Cup race. Burning a ton of fuel here, something I hope they will change in time. I think we need the choice really to choose our fuel levels now. My first effort was a 1 minute 36.7, at this point the top 4 are only covered by just over a tenth of a second, so very, very close. So then I came in for some new boots and had myself one last shot. I was in 5th at this point, just under 4 tenths off the pole time. I timed it up well with about 10 seconds left of the session to go. I was happy with my place. So I went for broke and just pushed a little bit too hard here coming out of turn number two. So I thought, sod it, I'll end that lap there. And meaning when all was said and done, I would be starting in sixth for this one. So lining up here on the grid for the race start, you're going to see how beneficial it is to use traction control for the starts in cars such as this. You'll see that I'll be flicking it to level 2 to limit the wheel spin in the first stage of the get off and then turning it straight off. So as we get off the line here, I get a much better launch and I'm already splitting 5th and 4th here and then taking 4th into turn number 1. Just making sure there's no issues here, there's no real problems at all. Coming around this tight turn number 2 and making sure that I'm very very careful on the power. Coming through turn number three here, you need to be real patient. You don't want to carry too much speed here and compromise the exits of this corner here, turn number four. Which if you do, you'll hurt yourself all the way down this next long straight. I get a little bit excited here myself and run a little bit wide into the next corner. But not all is lost here. I managed to just about keep control of it and we're still in the slipstream of the car in front, which is quite elongated now. I think it's about one and a half seconds. I heard. So we're going to stay in the slipstream of the car in front and we're going to come through these S's and up and over the hill here. I'm going to take a quick look at the fuel. We've got 8.8 .8 laps remain so it should be absolutely fine and now just coming over the crest of the hill and looking for our braking point which is somewhere for me between the black box and the 50 meter board on the left. Down to second but then flick up early to third to limit the wheel spin exiting the corner I call the corkscrew. Now, I know it probably isn't called that, but it reminds me of the one at Laguna Seca, so I've adopted that name for it, so you're going to have to get used to it. Our pace is looking good here, staying very much with the front group here on lap number one. I'm going to try and learn from last time out, trying to keep this car on the rails, as it's even more dangerous, in my opinion, due to the power that it has and the lack of weight than the group twos. I'm going to do that obviously to try and minimise the risk of any further mistakes. Rejoining the race here at the end of lap number two, coming into the final corner, third up ahead is going to go wide and onto the grass, but I'm beginning to get the hang of this low cell pedal now. Watch me as I close right up to him under braking. I actually find myself on the outside at turn number two, but then try and cut back underneath him to try and make the angle of turn number three more acute for him. I then take my usual line through the corner and then we're going to get a decent run down here onto the straight, forcing him to go defensive and take a tightened line into turn number five. Now as we come out here, watch the little red dot showing my steering input as I struggle to get the power down here out of the corner. I was in hindsight here probably pushing a little bit too hard, but I've had my eyes set on that third place at this point. And also, this wheel has given me so much more confidence, as I've mentioned before. This confidence is going to catch me out, though, 
as we make our way down to the corkscrew. The guy up ahead has gone mega, mega defensive. I just dip back into his slipstream here. But coming into the corkscrew, I just get a bit overconfident. Get on the power too early. Round I go. And I'm going to bin it coming out of the corkscrew. But as I recover here, things are about to get a whole lot worse. As I was recovering there, I ungoes right into the path of the cars coming through at full speed and there is a huge accident. I get pile driven straight into the barrier and find myself facing the wrong way yet again in a disastrous 20 odd seconds for me there. So I've gone from fighting for third down to dead last. Now I felt I was up to enough speed there. It wasn't a Sebastian Vettel or Lance stroll -esque move I thought. It was also a pretty unfortunate part of the track to be recovering both fast and blind. But as always, I want your guys' view. Was there anything else I could or should have done? Or was that just a racing incident? Let me know please in the comments section down below. So thanks to those two spins, my tyres were absolutely fried. So you'll see there that I decided to come in early. I thought I'd do a longer spin manage the tyres and go long as long as I can to see if I can salvage anything from this race. As if I can make a mistake, as you can see, so can everybody else. So you would have seen there that I just about gained a place almost straight away as the Frenchman spins and then rage quits. Then I'm going to go up to 14th here as the yellows are back out and the German rage quits. Now I don't understand that mentality. If I did that every time I made a mistake, I wouldn't have any contact to share with you guys. And as we come over the crest of the hill, we can see 12th and 13th up ahead. We're just under 6 seconds behind them and catching. Things aren't looking awful anymore, as they seem to be as all the guys in front still need to pit. Making sure I'm very careful here coming out of the court through. We're starting to come towards the end of lap number 4 now, and the German who made another mistake, keep an eye on the delta here, you'll see that drop right down, is going to come in. So him and there's going to be another couple of others are going to start coming in to make their first set of scheduled pit stops. So as we come into the final corner, you're going to see the German dive in there and we're going to go up to 13th now. And as we start lap number five, we are about five and a half seconds behind the next group of three I can just about see there on the mini-map, they're not quite in view yet, but they will be soon. Could we somehow recover and salvage a top 10 here? Fast forwarding to the end of lap number 5 here, I managed to take 2 seconds out of the car in 12th on that last lap, who is going to then dive into the pits. So I'm up to 12th now, with 4 laps to go, and 10th and 11th in sight. Starting lap number 7 then, the pace is clearly there as I put in the fastest lap of the race. We have closed right up to the two in front as you can see and I'm going to look to make a move on 11th place. Getting myself closer to that 10th place I am after. So as I said, the fastest lap of the race last time out here proves the pace is definitely there. I just need to start relaxing and minimising the mistakes that I make just through pushing too hard really. They are very similar to the issues I made when I first went from the wheel to the controller, no wrong way round, from the controller to my G29 steering wheel last year. Now I'm confident through time that these mistakes will disappear, but last time out was a particularly bad race and we have already learnt from that as we line up 11th here and then we're going to dive up the inside coming into the corkscrew making sure on the outside there I give him enough room not to run him into the gravel so we're up to 11th now and we're going to stay on board here for the remainder of the race as there is nothing to do now other than try and cut down that 2.2 seconds between ourselves and a top 10 here so whilst we stay on board here, I wanted to cover a few things, well, like I normally do. 
I'm trying to improve not only my driving obviously, but at the same time trying to improve the channel just generally. There are almost 15,000 of you now, for which I just want to say a massive thank you. I know I do regularly, but I am incredibly grateful for the opportunities that are starting to come my way, thanks to your support. And something else I always say is that it's not lost on me at all that without you guys there, there is no chance of these opportunities coming around. So thank you so, so much. And you never know, I may reach my goal of getting to a live event after all, just in the pro-am, but you never know. You'll also see that I've added my Instagram logo watermark into the video. They'll be there in every video going forward. So if you haven't already, and happen to give a damn about what I do in my personal life away from YouTube, head over there and follow me. Another thing I wanted to discuss, or just mention, is I wanted to give Polyphony Digital some kudos. They are actually, I think, beginning to listen more to the community. And after all the changes with the lobbies in a great update a couple of updates ago, they are now elongating the FIAs. Now, that's not news to everyone, everyone will already know, but it's just something I wanted to touch on because I think it's gonna be massive. These are looking like they'll last upwards of about 30 minutes now or just around the 30 minute mark. Now, I personally love a longer race as it means people will just woosah knowing that they have more time to make a move, which will allow people to play the long game. Setting up to actually make moves that are on rather than sending it because they feel they are running out of time and also consistency will be rewarded which is something well I haven't really put on show over the last few races but it's something that when I'm on my game is a real strength so I'm really really looking forward to that and speaking of Polyphony Digital we've just come off the back of another great event congrats to my boy Lightning for dominating as I knew he would Nice to get that weight lifted off his shoulders and karma has been restored after the shenanigans, to put it politely, of Fraga last time out. And Polyphony Digital, I've always wanted to go to Japan and I'll even pay my own way. Hashtag just saying. But enough chatting, back to the race here and the gap has come down but I don't think it's going to be enough as we come up and over the hill down towards the corkscrew for the final time here. Now I've been disappointed here with the one mistake that I made but looking at the positives it was only one mistake which was certainly a reduction in the number of mistakes from the race before and it looks like already that I'm seeing a real increase in pace and it's also not lost on me that these were difficult combos back to back so there are definitely positives once you look past the spins of course. So as we come into the penultimate corner here the gap is under a second now as we come into the final corner. It's still disappearing, 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 but it's not going to be enough. And we're going to finish in 11th place here, 6 tenths of a second behind 10th. So here's the 11th place being confirmed then. A handful of championship points, but we're not really too worried about that. This is what we're worried about and how it's affected my driver rating. Well, actually you are seeing my point score at the end of the night, as I did both this race and the Manufacturers Series. So a little perk for you all who have managed to stay this long through the video, I'm going to give you an early heads up of what's going to happen. The thumbnail and title says that I'm close to a decent result. Well, I did very, very well in the other race, which will feature in the next upcoming video. So shh. Don't tell the others who left early, but so I do know who stayed put till the very end of this one, put a name of something fun, I don't know, an animal, any animal in the comments so I know who stayed this long and I can acknowledge you guys personally. But you will want to stay and check that one out when it drops on Saturday. But until then, this is the end of the video guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.